Hello and welcome back to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Lois here and I've been in my studio this morning and as well as working on some of my personal projects, I've painted this demo for you. It's an ink and watercolour or line and wash painting depicting a sort of a dead or dormant tree in a very scrubby, dry desert landscape. Something like this is nice and simple, but it will really improve your drawing skills to have a go at the kind of shapes that are involved in this sort of twisted tree. It's the sort of shape that's really forgiving that you can sort of get wrong and it doesn't matter because it is this kind of, I say, very twisted shape. I'm going to um, just draw it out quickly and um, I'll speed that up with a time lapse, but I'm just going to put in a sort of a rough horizon line and then I'm going to map out where I want my branches and um, just pulling out some sort of twisted branches that kind of wrap around each other and then thinning out the branches, splitting them into more, but keeping it kind of sort of stunted looking at the same time. I can sort of use an eraser if I need to in any areas, change things up, etc, etc, all the time that I'm using a pencil. And that's another reason why this is a really fun technique for beginners, because you can mess around with the pencil, just get your line work sketch right, and then go over it with black fine liners, putting in some nice dark shading here and there uh, to give the bark some texture and also some nice deep shadows. I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold press watercolour paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board is at an angle of about 20 degrees, so gravity will help with the painting. I don't pre-stretch my paper, it will buckle a bit, but then as, it, as I leave it to dry naturally, it flattens out. I'm using the wet in wet method, so I've got my one and a half inch Princeton synthetic a mottler brush and I'm wetting the sky all over and wetting the land mostly all over leaving a few dry patches so hopefully I'll pick up some dry brush as I paint in the desert that will give me extra texture. I'm going to paint the sky um, with a combination of cerulean blue and cobalt blue mixed together keeping it nice and bright across the top. Remember watercolour dries back lighter so go in a bit darker than you need to go. This drying shift can be a bit tricky for beginners but the more you practice the more you'll get used to how much darker you need to go in order to get the colour that you want at the end. You can see that I've missed out um, a few patches of paint in the sky and that's giving me some nice cloud effects and having the paler paint streaking across the sky lower down gives me a really nice sort of desert sky. To begin the desert colour um, all I've done is I've mixed a little bit of my blue colour with some raw sienna and I'm dragging that across beneath the tree and behind the tree and across some of the foreground and then I'll bring some pure raw sienna across the landscape too and then dull that down in places with the same duller colour which is the sky colour mixed with raw sienna. I can add a little bit of burnt sienna to that to grey it down um, just for some variety and I've swapped to using um, a large mop brush um, I think it's nice to um, bring this paint across. It holds lots of paint um, so that I can make sure that I get good coverage with as few brush strokes as I need. going across the background so that the, um, the, the desert will diffuse a bit into the wet sky. Um, that will give me just a kind of almost sort of heat hazy effect where it softly diffuses. So I'm not having a sort of hard transition between the distant horizon line and the sky itself. I'm now stopping and looking at my washes. They're quite wet. Uh, I don't want them to run down the page, so turning the board 90 degrees means that my washes will just run down this way. And when they settle, it'll keep my land fairly flat. 
it doesn't take long for some of the surplus water just to run down a little bit further and off the page and then I can turn my board back again and lay it completely flat so that the washes will stay um, in place as they dry. If I left it at, a, at um, a tilt then gravity would draw the paint down a little bit and I don't need that in this instance. I've just mixed a little bit more cobalt blue into my um, raw sienna and burnt sienna mix and just for a slightly bluer, sort of fresher grass in the foreground. And now it's time to leave this layer to dry completely. So here's the dry painting so far. I want to paint in the tree now and I want it to sort of have a sort of reddish brownish hue to it. Sort of the look of um, almost sort of um, dead but sun bleached wood. Deeply, the deep shadows are already created by the darker areas of line work. So it's literally just painting in the, um, the trunk and some of the larger branches. I'm using my small calligraphy brush for this, but any small brush with a good point will do you just as well. The colour I've mixed up is burnt sienna with a touch of sepia and a little bit of neutral tint. And the little puddle of paint that I've mixed up has some variety of colour in it, some with more burnt sienna, sienna, some with more sepia and some with more neutral tint. So I can get a little bit of variety in my branches. And now that my tree is nearly finished, I can begin to just think about integrating some of those colours into the dried scrubby grasses below the tree and also trying to just get a little bit of um, a hint of shadow beneath it. I've swapped to the rigger brush for this, 
but you can continue to use the small brush that you're using if you like it. I like the sort of fairly unpredictable sort of whippy marks that I get from the long flexible hairs of this lining brush. If I need to soften any marks as I'm painting wet onto the dry page, I can just use my finger and just blend the marks in a little. Or I could dab them out with a tissue. And then finally, I'm going to switch back to my one and a half inch mottler brush and using raw sienna with a little bit of cobalt blue in it and some burnt sienna, I can glaze over the desert ground itself in places. Just warm it up, brighten it up across the foreground and just add a little bit of life now to the painting. This is a loose painting, so it's just giving an impression, I hope. Keeping it nice and simple for beginners. The thing here is, remember, the brushwork um, is what makes this painting. Keeping it minimal and using large brushes so that your brushwork is quite clean and effective at suggesting the land rather than of overtly painting every detail. And a last flourish is some burnt sienna to sweep across the bottom corner and a little bit elsewhere here and there um, to warm up the scene completely. And this contrasts beautifully with the yellows and the blues, blues in the sky and gives us this sort of really interesting and quite sort of um, vibrant painting, which works well, I think, with the line work of the tree. Just going to use my palette knife and scrape through some of that paint here and there um, under the tree and that will just take it back to the white of the paper and give me a few little highlights or sort of pale grasses under that tree as well which will contrast with the line work that's already there. So I think I've done enough there, any more, and it'll start to get overworked. I think the silhouetted tree works really nicely against the bright sky. The burnt sienna is really nice across the sort of sandy earth of this sort of desert landscape. So removing the tape and looking at it with a clean white border, just to check, make sure it looks okay. And I'm hoping this will be a really nice painting for beginners to try to sort of practice your tree drawing skills as well. Um, remember to keep your grasses really scribbly and scratchy as well because that helps them to look sort of dried and stunted and adds to the look of this desert painting. I hope you'll find that helpful and I hope as a beginner it will really help you to um, sort of practice your drawing skills as well as your wet in wet painting skills. And if you're an intermediate uh, painter then maybe add a few more extra details to this and I think you'll find it a really enjoyable painting. Well thank you so much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you very much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. We couldn't run the channel without you and we appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much and I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.